two, or three, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack to Jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Oh, it's root, root, root for the Cubby. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball. This is the from WBRN Radio and beaming on the Boston Red Network. The episode is the week that was on the 22nd of February, 2020. This is an extended version in that the Nevada caucus is history. Bernie uh, Sanders is in uh, Texas. Uh, the mayor of South Bend, Little Petey was in uh, Colorado, left town early. Joe Biden was uh, in uh, Las Vegas to address his uh, fans or voters, or whatever you want to call them. Anyway, basically, the contest turned out as the polls had predicted. Bernie Sanders uh, was a winner, and with the early returns uh, coming in at about 45, 46, somewhere between 50 and 46 percent, we don't have the uh, finals. Uh, perhaps we'll have uh, the finals from uh, Las Vegas on the uh, Monday morning quarterback, which will air on a Monday, or an extended version later on Monday, but nonetheless it will air. About our broadcast, they are as timely as one can be in the political world in that um, it is a little more complicated in uh, Las Vegas they scrapped the app that they were planning to use from a dodgy organization called Shadow. And they went uh, to a uh, basic solution using uh, Google uh, Docs, which is a program offered by Google, along with various other things, Google Mail, you name it, they got it. Anyway, nonetheless, they set that up where people could log into it. It is a... a uh, secure a login and the 2,000 plus precincts the people in charge would each log in and they would enter the appropriate votes. What they used was a commonly called a rank choice and we'll get to Uncle Carl in a minute here but he describes Harry Reid the former leader of the Senate in a wheelchair and he voted uncommitted. Anyway nonetheless uh, the voter turnout was very high. There were 75,000 people at least that voted early. And that's a characteristic of many of these states. South Carolina had an early voting. And as we go on to Super Tuesday, the next uh, Saturday we'll have South Carolina. And then the next week on Tuesday, a Super Tuesday. And we'll get that from Uncle Carl's article uh, out of the Wall Street Journal where he describes it. Uh, he's useful. Uh, for more than once, I suppose, around here. Anyway, uh, nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, that is the uh, lay of the land. And we'll look back at some of the polling and see how it's going and take a look at North Carolina. That was supposed to be a so-called firewall uh, for Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden came in second in uh, Nevada. And the uh, third place went to Mayor uh, Petey. And then we had the 4th and 5th place, I believe. Uh, Amy Klobuchar was in 5th and Liz Warren got in 4th. Now, Liz Warren had a strong debate uh, in there in Nevada. However, uh, many of the people had already voted. Now, they'll have this debate Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday coming up, in uh, South Carolina. It will not only be for South Carolina, but uh, for Super Tuesday. And one of the big problems is that many, many of these states... The uh, early voting has already taken place. So once they have the debate on Wednesday, many people would have already voted. It's not like it was in uh, the old days where people waited primarily uh, for the voting day. We had some absentee ballots, but uh, that uh, 
clearly shifted to convenience voting, voting they called it, in places like Arizona where absentee ballots, of course, were mailed out. And now in uh, many places, uh, those mailed out ballots uh, can be deposited at uh, electoral deposit uh, points. And that is happening in many states. In Oregon, they mail everything out. More is going to mail out ballots than before. There's really not any instances at this point in time of uh, voting uh, by Internet. And many of the security people uh, frown upon it uh, there. And we'll see where that goes. But the mail-out ballots becoming very, very uh, popular mailed out to everyone that can be uh, dropped off as it was in Nevada at various places and in some states not only that drop off they can be also dropped off on election day and in many of the states that actually have primaries uh, that is run by the uh, states uh, generally speaking and not by the parties now in Nevada of course some Nevada caucuses were run by the Democratic Party of uh, Nevada now whether that will disappear or not one does not know, but Harry Reid was there uh, talking about Nevada should be moved up ahead of New Hampshire and also ahead of uh, Iowa because they are not representative of the U.S. There's no doubt about that. Whether that tradition will uh, be around uh, for the next election uh, cycle in uh, 2024, we don't know at this point in history where it will be or where it uh, shall not be. Anyway, we'll get to Uncle Carl Rove, and then we'll go to uh, some other things here for the week that was. The week, incidentally, the week that was a very interesting week also in that there were uh, surfaces, uh, so-called briefings, they call them. Now, these briefings uh, b- before the House Intelligence Committee, and that is a committee uh, that is chaired uh, by uh, Swifty Ship. Anyway... Nonetheless, uh, officials were there from the NSA, uh, and basically what they said is uh, the uh, possibility of the Russian Federation interfering in this election uh, by using uh, propaganda uh, to enhance the uh, chance of uh, D.J. Trump being re-elected. And also, uh, uh, Bernie talked about being briefed about a month ago on... uh, their uh, interference to try to promote his candidacy and he uh, talked about that uh, the day after uh, the Washington Post article ran. Now it was interesting that article ran uh, said that basically that the Russian Federation wanted to help Bernie win the uh, Democratic contest uh, there. These allegations are, uh, tend to be a bit dodgy and then of course uh, we had uh, later there the Trump people coming back against that and saying, uh, no, that did not occur. And, of course, uh, Trump uh, fired his uh, national uh, NSA uh, type there and replaced that person. So we're seeing a lot of things revolving around that, and you'll see more things revolving around it. One thing is definitely uh, certain, that even in Nevada there was a uh, preference amongst some of the Democratic officials there uh, for uh, Joe Biden. And that has been all along. In fact, the Democratic uh, DNC uh, changed the debate uh, requirements to allow Bloomberg uh, to debate in Nevada. Because prior to that, they had a uh, polling and fundraising uh, requirement. And the fundraising, you had to do it in various states, which which meant you had to have individual donations. Bloomberg is self-funded. He did rise in the polls. Therefore, they put him on the stage. That was to offset him as it pertained to Bernie Sanders. However, it turned into a disaster uh, in that uh, Elizabeth Warren immediately got on Bloomberg about non-disclosure clauses he had out there, contracts, with some women that had criticized him for language, supposedly. Now, later, about, uh, what, 24, 48 hours later, Bloomberg said, well, if they contact a company, they could be released from their non-disclosure status. We'll see. As of this broadcast, there's been nothing from any of the women so far. 
but that was a bit dodgy for uh, Bloomberg. And also at the same time, there's stop and frisk, why he's known as stop and frisk Bloomberg. Will not help him with uh, followers of O.J. Simpson, African Americans. So all of these things revolving around uh, his uh, candidacy. And the big question is, where will he factor in uh, with Joe Biden? Now in South Carolina, it's a little bit different there. You you have uh, Tom uh, Steyer uh, running there, and he's running in the double digits, uh, 18, 19, 20 percent there. He has been advertising uh, there with uh, what is known as traditional African-American media, newspapers, radio, etc. And so now you have a uh, rejuvenated uh, Joe Biden. And, of course, Bernie off the win in uh, Nevada. And how will he occur there? Uh, prior to that, Bernie did well in uh, South Carolina the last time around. He, I believe he came in uh, second in South Carolina. I'd have to check that one. But uh, this time around, uh, behind uh, the Hillary Clinton. But this time around, you have Biden there. Will Biden be in uh, second or third place? Or will he be in third, uh, first place? And where will Bernie be? And then Tom Steyer. And, of course, you get Bloomberg somewhere in that polling. We'll look at the polling and be able to determine that. On the international scene, uh, DJ Trump will be in India on Monday. He'll get a welcome uh, there from uh, Modi, the uh, Prime Minister uh, there, Nationalist Prime Minister uh, of the Hindi Party. Anyway, he'll welcome him to his home uh, district, and then uh, they will go to a uh, cricket uh, stadium, the largest one in the world. Uh, it uh, seats 100,000 people, and along the way there will be people welcoming uh, DJ Trump in his presidential uh, mobile. That uh, will cast that two-day uh, trip. He'll be there Monday, and then he'll move on to Delhi on Tuesday, where they'll talk about uh, a trade deal with India. India has 1.5 billion people, but yet their uh, GDP is only uh, 2 point. I, I'm not certain of exactly where at 2 point trillion dollar economy there. And their economy of the uh, basic um, numbers from the government are a bit dodgy. We don't exactly where they are, but their economy is not where it uh, should be at this point in time. So we'll see on that one. He'll also, incidentally, where he's in uh, Narabaj, uh, I'm just pronouncing the name of the town, but of uh, the city actually. Um, the home of Mahat Gandhi, uh, the uh, individual that founded uh, India, which was called the largest democracy until Modi came along. Anyway, those things, in fact, they've even walled off the slums. So the motorcade will not see the slum area in the city. So those are many of the things that, yeah, on the surface, that do, in fact, uh, surface. And also we have the... Uh, coronavirus that's moving along now known as COVID-19 and we normally call it COVID-19 so we'll just call it COVID-19 it has spread uh, to many places particularly the Korean uh, Republic the cases there are moving up uh, every day and so is the death rate is in Italy it's I believe now in Pakistan and the list goes on and on on the Monday morning quarterback we'll have more on uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. Look at some of my notes here. As uh, the numbers uh, move up there for that particular uh, virus. So, thus, uh, and also its uh, impact. We'll have that on Numbers Man, which will appear here uh, the next day or so. It's normally a weekend program, but we've been the last few weeks, because of this uh, schedule, uh, and these various uh, primaries, caucuses, etc. It sort of got us a little bit behind. We still have a technical presentation that's about 80-90% of it is in the can. It'll be out uh, the next few days also. That's on the open source report part of WBR uh, Radio and the Boston Red Network. So we have many, many things. Let's go to uh, Carl Robe and we'll kind of... Um, 
preview this. Anyway, he's writing in the Wall Street Journal on the 20th. Presidential nominating candidates are continually attested, but not all tests are graded equally. The one coming up will skip Nevada. We've already had it. South Carolina and 14 states plus American Samoa on uh, Super Tuesday. March the 3rd, it could be enough to determine Democratic nominee and the next occupant of the Oval Office. Well, he's really forecasting here. The most important test will be uh, South Carolina. I would say that South Carolina will not uh, be uh, the most important test. It'll be Super Tuesday. Will uh, followers of uh, O.J. Simpson, uh, African-American Democrats, send Joe Biden roaring into Super Tuesday with a win? or doom his candidacy by defeating him. They won't doom his candidacy. He will move on into Super Tuesday. Bloomberg's strategy skipping the first four contests, bearing the competition on a mountain of cash uh, for Super Tuesday, will also be tested. The former mayor's team and warned of a moderate uh, candidates by staying in the race. They uh, propel uh, Bernie Sanders to a seemingly insurmountable delegate lead. Bloomberg, had, Bloomberg excuse me, has a reason to worry. After spending uh, $400 million on advertising, he's only at 16.5 in second place in California. In uh, this real clear uh, politics average, 11.7 and uh, fourth in uh, Texas and 17.3 and third in uh, North Carolina. It's also worth uh, keeping an eye on the other less obvious but still consequential tests. One is how much the influence of uh, Harry Reid has in Nevada. He had a lot of influence there. Former amateur boxer, Senator Majority Leader, retired in Ealing, but remains in uh, the Silver State's Democratic, uh, remains a uh, heavyweight. Uh, the past Friday, uh, Steve uh, Horford, Nevada's only African American Congress uh, type, uh, backed uh, Biden. Only three days after the former vice president took a uh, gut punch, New Hampshire. This is an important uh, get for Mr. Biden, and it's hard to believe uh, Horford's uh, endorsement without being encouraged by his mentor, Harry Reid. No doubt about that. I didn't even know he was there. The following day in a wheelchair and showing the effects of a cancer treatment, Reid cast an early uh, ballot. He then talked to reporters, his real purpose in servicing publicly and praised Amy Klobuchar's debate performance, spoke cautiously about uh, Bernie Sanders, and after admitting there were valid criticism of Bloomberg, labeled him a good mayor. Well, that's been a long time ago. Harry saved his best for uh, Mr. Biden. Iowa and New Hampshire are not representative of the country. He said Biden would do well in uh, Nevada, which he did. He uh, placed uh, second in Nevada, and very well in uh, South Carolina, which will uh, be a truism. He uh, predicted people should not be counting uh, Joe Biden out of the race. We at this mic do not. These uh, comments often, uh, as many Democrats wondered, if Biden is down for the count are a strong sign. It's unclear how many Nevada Democrats will respond. They did, in fact, respond. The Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall backed Biden, citing his experience in invoking big progressive change. If uh, Mr. Biden gets back into the fight by finishing strong in Nevada, which he did. And he owes much of this uh, to the witty former uh, Senate colleague. Then there are the tests the Democratic field, the ability to track independence that will be on Super Tuesday. There are organizations all across America organize efforts by Republicans uh, to vote in uh, the primary and states that allow that. Nonetheless, uh, Alabama, Arkansas, uh, Minnesota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, and Virginia, and American Samoa will open uh, con- uh, will have open contests. Anyone can participate, even if previously affiliated with another party. Uh, a club of five: California, Colorado, Massachusetts, Oklahoma, and North Carolina have mixed primaries in which some independents can vote in the Democratic contest. Only Maine limits its primary to registered Democrats. A total of 1,344 Democratic delegates will be chosen on Super Tuesday, March the 3rd. 45% uh, from open primaries and 54% from mixed primaries. This is worth going over 
once more here now Alabama red state Arkansas red state Tennessee red state um, Texas red state then you have Minnesota thrown in the middle of it there and Vermont and of course Virginia been a lot of good things happening in Virginia and then of course you have the large state California Colorado Commonwealth of Massachusetts we've been looking to see how Liz Warren does in a Massachusetts because it does the Commonwealth does border Vermont uh, in the Democratic contest so how many independents are dis uh, affiliated uh, are disaffected excuse me Republicans will vote in the Democratic contest the more they do the higher the turnout is likely to be signaling the potential surge for Democrats this fall controversially uh, failing to uh, turn out more voters than normal given that there's no Republican contest should uh, signal a weakness. Not necessarily so. Primaries are very, very uh, tricky situations and particularly uh, after uh, Super Tuesday. Now we have states like uh, Pennsylvania which would normally be a much more fertile ground uh, ground, uh, for Joe Lunchbox Biden. He was born in Stratton uh, there and where would uh, Bernie fit in there? Hillary Clinton uh, won that state over Barack Obama in uh, 2008. We covered that election as well as anyone could. After Barack Obama won Iowa, he lost New Hampshire. He came back and did well in uh, Nevada and, of course, obviously in South Carolina. But we, many of these states were not in Super Tuesday at the time. California was much uh, later. The Commonwealth was much later. And many of these red states were later in the ballgame. I remember Tennessee uh, was not there. So, again, the calendar has changed. I think the big question here now is not so much in South Carolina, how Bloomberg will do there, but how he will do on Super Tuesday will basically start to seal uh, Bloomberg's uh, fate. Now, as for the other candidates there, Amy Klobuchar, Amy Klobuchar is in a very odd position in that she has to go big. That's on Super Tuesday. And she has South Carolina coming up there. And that state, uh, you, you basically have Bernie. You have uh, Tom Steyer. Uh, you have uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden. And what position those those three would be in. And then you get into fourth uh, place. Bloomberg is not there, obviously. You see what Liz Warren's doing there, what Amy Klobuchar does there. And how she does on Super Tuesday, uh as to where she goes on from. And a lot of that will depend, obviously, on uh, funding. We'll have more on on future uh, broadcasts. Hey, let me just check things here before we go to the actual uh, totals itself. We'll get this in the L.A. Times. This is on uh, Bernie. And Bernie Sanders told by U.S. officials that Russia is trying to help his campaign. That uh, they warned him on... Uh, Warren, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, warned uh, this is actually from the Bloomberg Service, interesting there, by Mac Berkeley. I suppose how you pronounce that. Anyway, uh, Bernie Sanders warned Russia on Friday to stay out of the U.S. election as he confirmed that U.S. intelligence office had briefed him on the Russian effort to uh, help his uh, presidential campaign. He went on to say V.I. Putin of Vladimir Putin is a thug. He's an autocrat and he may be a friend of... Uh, D.J. Trump's not a friend of mine. That's what he told reporters in Bakersfield, California. That's a working class town as you can get. Let me tell Mr. Putin, the American people, uh, the American people, whether you're Republican, Democrat, or Independent, are sick and tired of seeing Russia and other countries interfere in our election. This is the best one we have seen. Sanders, who seeks a Democratic presidential nomination, said he received the briefing about a month ago and but it uh, didn't become public until the Washington Post. We previously talked about that. In the briefing, House lawmakers last week, intelligence officials said, was intervening in 2020 to help Trump get reelected. Former Vice President uh, Biden's Democratic camp, uh, campaign jumped on the development to suggest he's the least uh, favored candidate of the Russians and Trump. We know Vladimir, what Vladimir Putin doesn't want, doesn't who doesn't want to be a president, according to somebody speaking for uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden. 
Liz Warren uh, said the disclosure shows the need for transparency and seemingly uh, rebutting uh, Sanders for warning him up before making the meeting public. This is about disinformation and the way to fight disinformation. To call it out, show what it is, and give everyone full information as quickly as possible, she told reporters in Vegas. Otherwise, the Russians will continue to have uh, much uh, influence over our campaigns, and this is how we fight against that. It, is, it isn't clear how the Russians may be trying to intervene in the uh, current presidential campaign, but a, at the a Democratic debate in Vegas on Wednesday, Sanders hit at the uh, abusive uh, behavior attributed to his followers may have been the work of foreign elements trying to show division. All of us remember 2020. 16 and what we remember is efforts by the Russians ever to try to interfere in our elections and divide us up. I'm not saying that happened but uh, it would uh, not shock me. And that's effectively uh, that and let me see what else as we roll over to the LA Times here and This is interesting. They show uh, some cows here. Uh, Betty, uh, Nevada. Oh, the U.S. 95. Uh, anyway, Burroughs. A road between Las Vegas and Reno travels uh, some of the emptiest uh, land in the continental U.S. with uh, burrows uh, idling uh, along the asphalt and gutted uh, miner shacks. Uh, Bits of uh, shade are there, uh, faded signs of long gone brothels cracking the wind. Well, that's a good, interesting there. And it goes on to describe uh, what is happening here. They pour in from California, Arizona, Hawaii, from Mexico, the Philippines, El Salvador, China, Cuba, Iran, uh, Eritrea, even uh, this mostly uh, empty chunk of the planet. More than 90% of all Nevadans live uh, tightly in uh, Vegas, uh, Reno here, making it the third most urbanized state in the nation. I did not know that. It's the first test of uh, true diversity. Both cities are sometimes satellites to their uh, coastal counterparts to the west, more connected to Southern California Bay Area than to each other. And in that sense, uh, the caucuses here are a taste of a much bigger electorate, electoral uh, bounty uh, when California votes. Now, this is kind of interesting interpretation. I'm glad I'm getting it in here. Uh, let's see. Amy uh, Belmonte, uh, born in uh, the Philippines, raised in Hawaii, in Hawaii moved to uh, Vegas from Honolulu in 1996 when her husband Leo was offered a management job at the Federal Aviation uh, Administration. Uh, devoted Christians, they uh, have been leery about moving to Sin City, but found a a church they liked with a Japanese, oh boy, Hawaiian pastor fell in love with the low price of homes. They were indeed low price at that time. When uh, we t uh, when uh, we tell them you can uh, come here and own a house for three hundred thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars, they come. Uh, Belmonte uh, said, "I bought over ten people here, and I have uh, had a reunion here, just of people in my high school in Honolulu." Filipino people population in Park County that doubled a decade uh, to 17,000 people in uh, 2015, more than uh, twice the number of all people in the country in uh, 1950. That's quite a few. The Latino population did the same between 1990 and 2000, rising to 300,000, now to more than uh, 650,000, even with the housing market collapse temporary devastating the economy we talked about that in a, a different uh, program we have diversity within diversity that's from robert lang a professor of urban affairs at the university of nevada las vegas clark county looks like america is expected to look in uh, the mid uh, 21st century uh, las vegas has had the reputation in uh, reno that uh, los angeles has in san francisco a boorish, uh, soulless upstart but grew too fast. Greater Las Vegas has three-fourths of the state's residents, 2.2 2 million people. The population of Reno area is about 465,000. The rest of Vegas is a smattering of 
small town surrounded by the emptiness of inhuman scale. That's according to uh, to use the mark the words of uh, Wallace uh, Sturgeoner. I'm not sure who he was. Nevada's mountains originally great uh, gambles, 115 individual ranges amongst them. Uh, we had copper oil and so forth and so on. Natives uh, were uh, displaced as long-term settlers moved into the watered uh, spots. Mormon farmers, as some of Harry Reid's associates, farmed the river valleys, planting their uh, dash of green and ranchers ran their herds in uh, the uh, stoops. Snow melted window uh, rivers followed from the east uh, Sierra, bless uh, below uh, Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe being very f- uh, the first uh, stable cities grew up around Reno and Carson City, which is the uh, capital. Three hundred miles away, and four decades later, the turn of the century, Las Vegas was still uh, just a meadow and a watering hole on the old uh, trail from Salt Lake City to Vegas. When the uh, Union Pacific landed down track, it decided to put up a station, repair shops there, and in uh, what 1905 auctioned off 110 acres for a city. Had 8,000 people there in 1930. Vegas might remain a small uh, railroad outpost, so like Needles or Barstow. The next year, construction began on nearby Hoover Dam. Woody Guffrey sings about that. And Vegas legalized uh, gambling at the uh, at a perfect time. Southern California sheriffs were shutting down uh, mob uh, gambling shops and uh, bingo parlors. And many of those operators and their customers headed uh, a couple of hundred miles down Highway 91. Anyway, a story of Vegas there, uh, period, and the uh, place that Harry Reid uh uh, help build a unique uh, place in the extreme. Howard Hughes had holed up in the ninth floor of the uh, Desert Inn and bought a local uh, TV station. Well, Desert Inn is no longer there. About more and more of this. Uh, we'll skip some of this over here. But this is a very good story of Las Vegas in the LA Times. Uh, Las Vegas had uh, learned A history of the Silver... Oh, this is a professor of history there. This is Michael Green. Uh, tends to be a, a trend line for the rest of the country, according to Professor Green. Las Vegas uh, being uh, democratic when uh, Perkins was growing up, though it was not extremely liberal. Segregation was the unwritten rule. African people were pushed into uh, the unpaved, uh, run-down section of West Vegas. In the early days of the casino, Sammy Davis Jr., Louis Armstrong were not allowed to stay at the resorts where they performed. Mexican Americans were relegated to similar conditions on the east side. We were the Mississippi of the uh, West, Perkins said. And I guess I didn't introduce uh, Perkins here. He's one of the uh, people, Perkins said, he started uh, running uh, Kino games in Vegas, moving from casino to casino. This is Fillmore, uh, wait a minute, just a minute here. His grandfather, Fillmore Rothstein, had moved to Vegas after World War II. He was an accountant by trade. He ran a uh, number of uh, games back home in uh, Stratton, Pennsylvania, where he had mob connections, Perkins has said. And anyway, this is Perkins, Steve Perkins, 50 years old. Anyway, this is Steve Perkins, grew up in and around uh, Vegas. Uh, there was a town of Mormons, mobsters, and military from uh, the Air Force base around there anyway. Kind of fascinating, getting a little bit fascinated by this. And big demographic changes were in the wind. In uh, 1989, Steve Wynn opened up the first mega resort, the Mirage. And that brought in a new era there. Old casinos were dynamited to make room for the massive luxury hotels, MGM Grand so forth and so on. Okay, workers are streamed into build of resorts as well as sprawling subdivisions. The city surged from uh, 741,000 to in 1990 to 1.95 million in uh, 2010. Latino community ballooned from 83,000 to uh, over a half million, 597,000. 
jumping from 11% to 29%, while African Americans grew from 9.5% to 10%, Asian Americans 3.5% to uh, 9.5%, with uh, Clark County leading the charge, and of course turning uh, blue. So this is basically the house that Harry Reid uh, built, and where it stayed anyway. A little bit about Reno, we won't get into Reno. Reno is a uh, Reminded me the last time I was there, a small uh, town, town, excuse me, and still is on the way to Lake Tahoe. Different uh, situation there. The rural parts, and that was where Amy Klobuchar was messing around in, remained red, relying on military bases, testing sites. Oh boy, not a good mix. To get there from Iowa City, drivers fall in 90. Uh, Jerry Pippen used to fall in 90. Jerry Pippen, in fact, the late great Jerry Pippen. I had his uh, broadcast headquarters at an all-night show in uh, Las Vegas, in downtown uh, Las Vegas, period. So he was there, and uh, little green men, I suppose, were there with him. Anyway, alien themes out, uh, outside of uh, Betty, uh, Nevada. Maybe I'll put this up there. It's interesting to have it. Anyway, thought we would segue off to this. Let's get these polls and just get a little look back uh, here at... Uh, some of the polls just to highlight where we are. We won't spend a lot of time on the polls. We'll have, we may not. I will go down this one. This is kind of a preview here. This is from Quantipec People. Um, this is on the uh, 20th uh, here. Anyway, um, amongst registered voters in Wisconsin, uh, Trump leads Democratic candidates by anywhere from 7 to 11 percent. Uh, he is at 50 to 39 percent over Amy Klobuchar at 51 to 41 over Liz Warren, uh, 49 to 41 over Mia Petey, and 49 to 41 over Bloomberg, and he's 50 to 43 over uh, Bernie, and 49 to 42 over uh, Joe Biden. In uh, Pennsylvania, a little different uh, situation there. Uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden is ahead of Trump, 51 to 42. Amy Klobuchar leading 49 to 42. Bloomberg, 48 to 42. Bernie Sanders, 48 to 44. Bernie is good. It's in Pennsylvania. Bernie Judge, um, by four points. Uh, Warren, uh, by three points. And if we go down. This is a multi thing of uh, different states here. We'll see. Sanders nearly tops uh, Trump, uh, 48 to... Narrowly, excuse me, 48 to 43. Bloomberg is 47 to 42. Biden is 47 to 43, the same as Bloomberg. Warren is 45 to 43, a much more narrowly in there. Mia Petey, a uh, two point lead, and Amy Klobuchar, a one point uh, lead. In uh, Wisconsin, this is favorability. Uh, Rating in Wisconsin with 50% of the voters saying that they have a favorable opinion of him. 47 saying it's unfavorable. That's in the state of uh, Wisconsin. The Democratic contest is more negatively viewed uh, in uh, by voters in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Between President Trump and the Democratic candidates, voters aren't uh, showing uh, much enthusiasm about any candidate there. And uh, voters in the three states are uh, in sync on naming the three most important issues in Wisconsin, 31 to 27, say health care, uh, 12% climate change. Pennsylvania, 29% say economy, 26% say health care, 13% climate change. And in Michigan, 35% say the economy, 24% say health care, and 12% climate change. And the Trump approval rating... Um, Wisconsin is the highest, uh, 51 to 46, in both Michigan and Pennsylvania. Job approval rates on the water as more voters disapprove than approve of him. In Michigan, voters uh, disapprove 54 to 42. In Pennsylvania, uh, 52 to 44. Looking at how voters rate their own uh, personal finance compared to uh, 2016, Wisconsin, uh, 62 percent say they are better off. 20% say they are worse off. In uh, Pennsylvania, 57% say they are better off. And 20% worse off, 21% the same. In Michigan, 55% said better off, 21% uh, say worse off. 
Also had to rate the uh, state economy with Wisconsin voters are more positive. 70, 76% say they're excellent. And Pennsylvania, 70% said excellent or good. And in Michigan, 63% said excellent or good. In the uh, Senate race, the incumbent Gary Peters leads the Republican uh, John James, uh, 45 to 34. That could be a very close race. And this is some of the cross tabs here. I won't really go into most of it here. Uh, if the election were held today, the candidate were Amy Klobuchar, the Democrat, and uh, uh, DJ Trump. Klobuchar gets uh, 45% in Michigan, 44% for Trump, and 49% uh, she's getting in Pennsylvania, 42% for Trump. And 30, this is kind of amazing here in Wisconsin, only 39% for Amy and 50% for Trump in this poll. Bloomberg runs a little different. This poll, uh, for whatever reason, is not that favorable to the Democratic candidates. And we, again, we went on this economy 30. Which of these is important issues to you in deciding who to vote for? Uh, in the election for president, the economy, etc., 35% in Michigan, um, the economy, and 29% in Pennsylvania, 31% in uh, Wisconsin. On health care, Michigan is at 24, Pennsylvania at, at 26, and 27% in Wisconsin. Climate change, very low in all these states, 12% in Michigan, 12% in Wisconsin, 13 in Pennsylvania. Gun policy, only 11 in Michigan. Uh, seven, excuse me, 11 in Pennsylvania, 8 in Wisconsin. The Supreme Court, 8. John James, uh, being Michigan only, his fables at 33, 15. I guess they really don't know much about him. If you look at the approval rating for DJ Trump at 42 in Michigan, 44 uh, in Pennsylvania and only Wisconsin at 51 approve of DJ uh, Trump. Let's roll on here and see if we can get uh, Emerson in. It basically came out true. Now this is in uh, Nevada uh, leading the field with uh, 13 points, 30% support. Uh, and then came Bluna Judge at 17 and Joe Biden at 16. That got reversed and then Liz Warren at 12 and Amy Klobuchar fighting it out there is how this poll shaped up Nevada. Since the last poll of Nevada in early uh, November, uh, Bernie gained 11 points. Uh, Mayor Petey is up uh, 12 points. Biden is down 14. And Liz Warren fall 10 points. Amy Klobuchar and John uh, and Tom Steyer uh, moved into double digits. So this basically big fight here. I haven't heard anything about Tom Steyer, but Liz Warren and Amy Klobuchar were fighting there. And, of course, Bernie was, uh, according to this, outperformed by about 20 points, at least in the early part. Amongst uh, voters who supported uh, Hillary uh, Clinton, uh, Biden leads with 26%, followed by Blue Jay, uh the judge there, Tom Steyer, and Amy is uh, at 14. And then, of course, uh, Bernie at 11 there. So this is pretty much uh, what happened. A strong response, 75% are in favor of it, would recognize marriage as between couples regardless of gender. That's something that, that's a generic to Las Vegas itself. Nonetheless, this was a uh, Nevada News uh, Now, 8 Now, and in Nevada, Emerson College. Hmm. I didn't know that, uh, they had a college in Nevada. I guess they do. Anyway, um, what do we have here? Uh, 4.7 there. That really didn't come into play there. Uh, and what did we have? Well, I didn't have a total numbers there. Um, Democrats and independents are likely... Uh, oh, 425. So anyway... This is uh, the Emerson College, and I did, did not know. I knew that they had a uh, across from the common, but I didn't know they had anything in Vegas. Oh, well, I guess they do. Find out something uh, right away there. Spencer Kimball, he's there. 
and the image in the polling. Anyway, that is that. And then what else do we have here? I'm not sure we'll get. Ah, we get trip line up here. So this is a survey. As you, this is a mass primary. We hadn't brought that up, but yet Center for Public Opinion, University at the uh, Lowell. This is uh, the 12th through the 19th. Is what they're talking about. And this is the latest figures we have: 21 percent of for Bernie. 20 for Liz Warren in this poll, 14 for Joe Biden, so he's in third place. Tulsi Gabbard has uh, three there. Little Petey at 15. And the breakdown here, party IDs, leaners, etc. 15, 13, uh, Biden, uh, 15 Democrats, 13 Independents. Uh, then Bloomberg mixes into the match at 12. And Amy McClellan has 10, 7. Bernie, uh, 19 and uh, 26 on independence, so he's doing very well there. 122 14 uh, for independence on committed as it would be there. And income rackets uh, Biden uh, 18 uh, below uh, 50 percent, and 17 at uh, 50 to 100, and 5 at 100 up there, and 25 with uh, no four year degree, 5 there. Anyway, that's him. And uh, Bloomberg, you, you tell that 17 percent of the uh, 50 to 100K and 13% above went with Bloomberg. Amy Klobuchar at 1 and 3 at, uh, what, from uh, 50 to 100 and, uh, where is she, 13 and uh, 11 and 7 there and 11. So it, it turned out Amy Klobuchar, I suppose. And 7% of the non-white, 10% of the Europeans are whites, what do you want to call them? We call them... Uh, Europeans. Anyway, Liz Warren, uh, 21% of her people are under, are below uh, 50,000, and uh, 19%, 50 to 100,000, that's, and 25%, uh, 100,000 up. 15% are uh, non-college graduates, four-year degrees, 24% are, 21% are Europeans, 18% non-white. So she comes out in pretty good shape here. The only other candidate would be Biden. So we look at male-female uh, split here. Uh, Biden, 21. Uh, that female, uh, 19. 9, excuse me. And Amy Klobuchar has 11% male, 8% female. Uh, interesting there. Liz Warren, 15% male and 21, 24% female. I won't go into some of these other breakdowns except to say with Bernie, 31% of his are 18 to 44, whereas uh, Biden, 14 uh percent of his uh, wait a minute hold on. Biden, yeah 14 percent and same with Bloomberg Buttigieg had 13 drops a little there and Tom Steyer had 2 okay Biden gets 22 percent of the conservative uh, types in there who else does that and so does Kelsey Gabbard that's all just troubling me about Kelsey Gabbard a large number of conservatives want to vote for 12 percent of conservatives for uh, Amy Klobuchar and 11 go with Bernie. Interesting there. Anyway, uh, moderates, uh, Bernie gets 14%. Amy Klobuchar, 12 And Bloomberg and Biden at 19 there. With the liberals, uh, Biden gets 9. Bloomberg gets 11. That's kind of surprising there. And Amy Klobuchar gets 8. Uh, Bernie gets uh, 20, uh, 20, 26 there. So those are some of the some of the names how they all uh, show up here, and the split between uh, Biden party IDs eight and nine. Um, as for Biden, uh, Bernie twenty and six on the independents and so forth and so on. We already talked about incomes. These are the uh, cross tabs, and let's see what else. Sanders uh, favored in Nevada. This is. Uh, Steve uh, McElwee, executive director, data for for progress is the name of his thing. Had Bernie at 35, uh, Liz Warren at 16, Biden at 16, and Boone and George at 15. Got some of that right, uh, but Bernie had just outperformed everything. Uh, caucus have been uh, undercovered by the media, but the state is the first test of how Democrats uh, perform. We find Bernie Sanders is in position for a strong victory with Warren, Biden, and uh, 
all lumped together. He has 35 percent. He had a lot more than that. Joe Biden continues to be the best amongst African American voters. Well, Warren and uh, Mia Petey perform across similarly uh, similarly uh, uh, lines. And speaking of uh, Bloomberg, he currently has a net favorable of a negative 48, with uh, 49% of likely voters viewing him unfavorably. Meanwhile, Liz Warren is a plus 39. This is after the debate. It seems Warren's strong performance in the debate led voters to view her more favorably and uh, turn them off to Bloomberg. But he's not wasn't on the ballot there. With, uh, uh, with a 20-point lead over his next most uh, supported opponent, Senator Sanders' strong position solidified his front-runner status. From there, we'll see the strength of Biden's firewall in uh, South Carolina. So this was it. And uh, this will uh, do it for us on the uh, 22nd of February 2020. Oh, and one other item we uh, almost forgot to do. Our remembrance of the actress, uh, Jeanette Duval. Anyway, she uh, played uh, Walona Williams on uh, the TV sitcom, composed the uh, theme song uh, for the Jeffersons. Uh, a very, very talented uh, person there. Anyway, this was on the 19th. Uh, Sandra Garcia, Jeanette uh, Duval, uh, who played uh, Sassy uh, Walona uh, Williams in the Good Times sung the theme song for the Jeffersons, died in uh, Glendale, California. was confirmed by her daughter, uh, Kershaw uh, Gipter uh, Fields. Anyway, Good Times it was in uh, 1974 to uh, 1979 on CBS, one of the first sitcoms with a predominantly African-American cast. And uh, featuring a two-parent household, uh, Duval, uh, character Winona was a single uh, neighbor of uh, Florence Evans, plays by Esther Rawls, uh, the matrix of the family show. Stylish, outspoken, etc. there, not hesitant to take in uh, Penny, and an abs- uh, absurd child played by young uh, Janet Jackson. Oh, okay. Anyway, it uh, goes on there... Uh, She wrote that song as a promise to her mother that uh, she would obtain a certain level of stardom, that her dream was essentially to have her uh, mother live in a luxury apartment. That's what Gupta Field said. That was written and sung as a gift to her mother, uh, Lillian uh, Duval. Duval. Ms. Duval felt uh, she had uh, lived the song. She told Jet Magazine, that was in 1992, I moved my whole family. She said, I bought a house, I bought a meat coat. Kind of interesting there. Moving on up became widely known as a jubilant and inspirational theme song for African Americans there. And Norman Lear of all tweeted, uh, moving on up, a uh, phrase of her. She was born Jeanette uh, DeBoy in uh, Philadelphia in August, although the exact date is not there. The family did not have much uh, anyway there. They don't know exactly when uh, she was born, and she isn't really telling people uh, about it, but that's okay there. Two months ago, she appeared in uh, live in front of a studio audience. Uh, live in front of a studio on a special actors uh, recreated episodes of Good Times All in the Family. She spoke with uh, Jimmy uh, Kimmel, who produced and hosted the show with uh, Mr. Lear. How happy she was that uh, Mr. Lear had seen her film and said, "I want you for a TV role." Anyway, off camera, she raised a family, worked to break stereotypes in Hollywood. In addition to her daughter, uh, Kashira, she is survived by a son, uh, Pravat uh, Gupta, and another go- daughter, Renee Gupta, uh, Renee Gupta, and a sister, uh, Lillian uh, Duval. And anyway, she, in 1992, she formed the Pan American Film and Art Festival with actor uh, Danny Glover. And what it does was it's showcasing uh, works by uh, people of African descent, and the, it will run this Sunday. Huh. May uh, Ms. Uh, Duval uh, 
Rest in peace. Anyway, this will do it for us. This is Boston Red in the Jerry Pippen broadcast booth. We'll see you on uh, the Monday morning quarterback. An extended version, no count. We'll have uh, coverage of the uh, South Carolina vote, uh, excuse me, of the uh, South Carolina vote on Sunday. Uh, again, we'll have a stretch schedule. And, of course, on Wednesday, we'll wrap up uh, Super Tuesday, which is Super Tuesday. Good day.